हेलो स्टूडेंट वेलकम टू दी पी जी पाठशाला आई एम अशोक गोयल फ्रॉम द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ फिजिक्स एंड एस्ट्रो फिजिक्स टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस इन दिस मॉड्यूल द फेड होम इक्वेशंस नाइमन सीरीज एंड द डी जनरेट कर्नल्स फ्रॉम द पेपर मैथमेटिकल फिजिक्स सो स्टूडेंट्स लेट एस सी वाट वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न इन दिस मॉड्यूल इन दिस मॉड्यूल वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न द यूज ऑफ नाइमन सीरीज इन सॉल्विंग integral equations we will learn about degenerate kernels and we give some examples in physics and mathematics consider the fed home integral equation f of x is equal to gx plus lambda integral a to b kx x1 fx1 dx1 this equation is equation in the unknown function f of x it is a inhomogeneous term g or x and the kernel is k x x1 and there is a constant lambda multiplied to the kernel before we attempt to determine the unknown function f of x as power series in lambda in lowest order of lambda we have f of x equaling f0 is equal to phi 0 x where phi 0 x is simply equal to the inhomogeneous term gx when we substitute this approximate in the integral term we obtain the next approximate f1x which differs from fx by terms of order lambda square so f1x is equal to phi not x plus phi 1x which phi not x is g of x phi 1x is lambda times the integral a to b k x x g x 1 d x 1 plus terms of order lambda square continuing in this way we get the next approximation f 2 x in terms order lambda cube so f 2 x can then be written as phi 0 x plus phi 1 x plus phi 2 x which in turn is equal to g of x plus lambda in integral a to b k x x g x 1 d x 1 plus lambda square term which is lambda square multiplied to the integral a to b k x x 1 d x 1 and the whole thing is again multiplied by an integral from a to b of the kernel x 1 x 2 multiply by the function g of x2 dx2 now from this zeroth order term first order term and the second order term we can discern what will be the general term so the form of the nth approximant if we continue in this way is easy to decipher and we obtain fn of x which is nth order term is equal to gx plus lambda integral from a to b over x1 the integrand being k x x prime gx plus lambda square product of two integrals one integral over dx1 which involves only the kernel which is a function of k x x prime multiply the integral again from a to b over dx2 of the kernel x1 x2 multiply by the function gx2 if we continue this the nth term is obviously lambda to the power n and the product of integrals the integrals in this product are for example a to b dx1 of k x x1 continue till the last term in the integral is an integral over dxn between the limits a to b of the product of the kernel which is a function of k x n n minus 1 and xn multiplied by the function g which is a function of xn now in the limit n goes to infinity we write f of x is the limit of fn x as n goes to infinity which can be written as limit n goes to infinity of a series which can write in the form of summation the sigma i is equal to 0 to infinity lambda to the power i integral multiple integral from a to b of dx1 dx2 dx i the integral being the product of kernels k x x and x1 another kernel 
which is a function of x1, x2, till kernel which is a function of x i minus 1 and x i, and multiplied by the function g of x i. Now we have to see whether the series x series converges or not. If the limits a and b are finite, a sufficient condition for convergence can be worked out easily. Let the variable x lie in the region a to b and another variable y lies in the region a to b. Then the kernel k, which is a function of two variables x and y, is assumed to be bounded by some number capital K. And similarly, in the region x lying between a and b, let mod of g be also bounded by a number capital G. Then the nth term in this series above can be seen to have a bound, namely mod of lambda to the power n multiplied by lot mod of g multiplied by the mod of k raised to the power n multiplied by the mod of b minus a to the power n. Now we can use Cauchy's condition for the convergence of an infinite series. A sufficient condition for the convergence is that lambda mod into k mod into the mod of b minus a is less than 1. Because if the mod of, if this product lambda mod k mod b minus a mod is less than 1, then obviously the product mod lambda to the power n mod g mod k to the power n mod b minus a to the power n is less than 1. This we emphasize is a sufficiency condition which is useful if b minus a is finite and mod lambda is small enough. To answer the question of convergence in a more general way, we need a more accurate analysis which we will discuss shortly. Now before we discuss more accurate analysis, with the help of certain examples, let us illustrate what we have done. So let us consider an example of an integral equation which is inhomogeneous, the integral equation being given by f of x is equal to 1 plus lambda, integral from 0 to 1 over dy of a product of x minus y into f of y. So see, in this equation, the inhomogeneous term g of x is simply equal to 1, the limits are from 0 to 1, and the kernel k, which is function x and y, is x minus y. So let us see how we obtain the first three terms of the Nyman series of this equation. Obviously, in the lowest order in lambda, f0x is equal to 1. Now, f1x is equal to 1 plus lambda integral 0 to 1 x minus y and substitute f of the lowest order term for f of y, which is f0y, which is equal to 1. So, you have f1x is equal to 1 plus lambda integral 0 to 1 x minus y 1 dy, which is equal to 1 plus lambda x by 2 minus y by 1 by 8. Next term f2x is equal to f0 plus f1x, f0x is 1, f1x is this lambda x by 2 minus 1 by 8 plus the next term is lambda square integral 0 to 1 x minus y substitute for fy this term which is x, x by 2 minus 1 by 8 integrated over dy. So this integral can be evaluated and we get for the f2x the terms f2x is equal to 1 plus lambda x by 2 minus 1 by 8 minus lambda square by 192. This is the way we can get the successive terms in the Nyman series of the equation. So we illustrated this by getting the first three terms for this equation. We consider another example where we are asked to determine the nth term in the Nyman series of the integral equation. The integral equation in this case is f of x is equal to 5x plus 1 plus 1 half integral from minus 1 to 1 t minus x ft dt. That is the inhomogeneous term is 1 plus 5x, lambda is 1 half, kernel is t minus x. The zeroth order term is obviously fx is equal to f naught x is equal to 5 naught x, which we write equal to 5x plus 1. The first order term is f of x is equal to 5 naught x plus 51x, where 51x is equal to half times the integral minus 1 to 1 t minus x, where f 
t is replaced by phi 0 t. So, phi 0 t dt, but phi 0 t is equal to 5 t plus 1. So, this phi 1 x is equal to 1 half from minus 1 to 1 integral over dt, t minus x, 5 t plus 1. This integral can be done easily. T, easily, we get phi by 3 minus x. Continuing in this way, phi and x is equal to 1 half integral minus 1 to 1 over dt of t minus x multiplied by the function phi of n minus 1 t where phi n minus 1 is the phi correct to nth order. All the phi's remember are linear in x. So let's write phi n x to be a n x plus b n. So since all phi's are linear, so they are all of the type a x plus b. So let us write phi n x is equal to a n x plus b n. Then a n x plus b n is equal to half times the integral minus 1 to 1 dt of t minus x a n minus 1 t plus b n minus 1, which can be evaluated. So phi n x will be, look like a n minus 1 by 2 multiplied by 2 by 3 minus 0 times x plus b of n minus 1 by 2 multiplied by 0 minus 2x, which is equal to minus b n minus 1 times x plus a n minus 1 by 3. So hence, a n is equal to minus b n minus 1 and b n is equal to a n minus 2 by 3. Or alternatively, we can write a n is equal to minus a n minus 2 by 3. So we have a 1 n minus 1 to the power n a naught by 3 to the power n is equal to minus 1 to the power n 5 by 3 to the power n for n is equal to 0, 1, 2. b 2n plus 1 is equal to a n x by 3 which n is equal to 0, 1, 2 and so on and so forth. b 2n is minus 8 a 2n plus 1 is minus 1 to the power n divided by 3 to the power n. A little involved algebra. So if you do it yourself, you can see one can easily obtain these terms. Hence the function fx can be written as f of x is equal to phi naught of x plus phi 1 of x plus phi 2 of x plus phi 3 of x and so on, which can be written in the form that fx is equal to sigma n is equal to 0 to infinity of phi 2 and x plus sigma for n is equal to 0 to infinity phi 2n plus 1 of x, which now substituting for the phi 2n and phi 2n plus 1 from the previous slide. So f of x can be written as summation over n from n is equal to 0 to infinity of a0 minus 1 to the power n by 3 to the power n times x minus minus 1 to the power n a0 divided by 3 to the power n plus sum over n is equal to 0 to infinity of a1 minus 1 to the power n by divided by 3 to the power n x plus minus 1 by 3 a0 by 3 to the n which is equal to 5x multiplied by 1 upon 1 plus 1 third plus 1 upon 1 plus 1 third plus minus 1 times x divided by 1 plus 1 third plus 5 by 3 multiplied by 1 upon 1 plus 1 3 which is nothing but 3x plus 2. So fx is equal to 3x plus 2 is a complete solution of the equation which we consider and it is worthwhile to substitute this value f of x in the integral equation to see this is indeed the solution. Now we discuss Feldholm equations and degenerate kernels. Degenerate kernels are also called separable kernels. They are defined to be kernels kxy which can be separated as a product of two functions. In general, a function is degenerate or separable if the kernel kxy can be written as a summation of a product of two functions pi of x multiplied by hi of x for all values of i from 1 to n. pi x and h 
पी आई ऑफ एक्स एंड एच आई ऑफ वाई कैन मेनी कंटिन्यूस फंक्शन ऑफ द आर्गूमेंट्स क्वाइट ऑफन द कर्नल के विद ए फंक्शन ऑफ एक्स एंड वाई इज जनरली ए फंक्शन ऑफ ओनली द डिफरेंस बिटवीन एक्स एंड वाई एंड कैन बी एक्सप्रेस इन द फॉर्म शो न वो दस इफ द कर्नल के डिपेंड्स ओनली on x and y through this combination x minus y that is if the kernel k x minus y for example is equal to exponential x minus y the kernel is degenerate kernel k x minus y is sin of x minus y is equal to sin of x cosine y minus cosine x of sin y is another example of a degenerate kernel but if you look at a kernel which is defined as k x y is the tangent of x minus y which is of course expanding the tangent as tan a tan b minus divided by 1 plus tan a tan b so the kernel k of x and y x minus y which if has the functional dependence like the tangent of x minus y which in turn is equal to tangent x minus tangent y divided by 1 plus tangent x plus tangent y cannot be separated and is therefore not degenerate feldholm equation with degenerate kernels can be written as we now consider the case of degenerate kernel with the feldholm equation so continuing we have fx is equal to gx plus lambda integral a to b kxy f of y dy equal to g of x plus a to b the kernel k is written in terms of a product some of the products sigma over i of a function pi which is a function of x alone multiplied by a function of y alone which is hi into of course the function f of y dy let ai is equal to integral a to b h i of y f of y dy so we, we integrate out over y remember the, see that the function p i s are functions of x only so we can do the integration over, over y so this integral over y once is done between the limits a and b is obviously some number which we have written here as alpha i since f y at this stage is unknown alpha i s at this stage are known numbers the integral equation then reads f of x is equal to g of x plus lambda sigma over j from 1 to n pjx into alpha j now multiply the equation by hix and integrate over x from a to b the left hand side is simply an integral from a to b of a product of two function fx and the function hix with which we have multiplied it and which from our definition is simply equal to alpha i thus we get alpha i is equal to g i plus lambda a sum over j is equal to 1 to n h i j alpha j where g i is this integral from a to b of dx or g x and h i x and h i j is an integral over dx between the limits a to b of the product of the function h i which is a function of x and the function p j which is again a function of x so h i j is also a number this equation represents a set of linear n linear algebraic equations for the unknown alpha i alpha i is a unknown they are n in number so in the matrix form if we write alpha as a column vector alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha n and g another column vector with entries as g1 g2 gn then h is a n by n matrix with the entries as h i j h11 h12 etc and then this equation simply can be written in the matrix form as alpha is equal to g plus lambda h a or we can write 1 minus lambda h a is equal one minus lambda h operating on this column vector alpha gives us the column vector g
where we have introduced a unit matrix I. So, where I is a n by n unit matrix. Solving this, we get alpha is equal to inverse of a matrix which is the unit matrix I minus lambda times the matrix H and multiply by the column vector G. The theory of linear algebraic equations tell us that if gx is equal to 0, that is the given integral equation is a homogeneous equation, then the right hand side of the equation which we have considered is 0, 2. A non trivial solution that is alpha not equal to 0 of the eigenvalue equation i minus lambda h operating on alpha is equal to 0 that exists. Say i is a unit matrix, say n by n, h is a matrix of or n by n, alpha is a column vector. So, this is an eigenvalue equation. So, the equation i minus lambda h operating on alpha equal to 0 exists if and only if the determinant of the mat matrix i minus lambda h is equal to 0. The solution to the homogeneous equation that is for gx equal to 0 exists for such values of lambda that satisfy the above equation. We can then write the matrix h operating on alpha or h alpha is equal to lambda inverse alpha. Now, this is an eigenvalue equation. It has non-trivial eigenfunctions alpha not equal to 0, which are the solutions. They exist only for values of lambda inverse such that the determinant of the matrix i minus lambda h is equal to 0. Such values of alpha are called the eigenvectors and lambda inverse are the eigenvalues of h. Each non-trivial eigenvector alpha gives us a solution of the homogene homogeneous equation. The number of linearly independent non-trivial solution is well known from linear algebra. Let us enumerate here the results from linear algebra. If all the eigenvalues are simple, that is if the equation determinant of the matrix i minus lambda h is equal to 0. Now look at this is a determinant of n by n matrix. So it is a polynomial equation of degree n. For lambda has n distinct solutions, then if lambda has n distinct solution, then one has n linearly independent eigenvectors alpha, one for each eigenvalue lambda inverse. If eigen, if any eigenvalue is, is repeated k times, where obviously k is less than or equal to n, in the case k equal to n, all eigenvalues are the same, then we may have 1 to k eigenvectors corresponding to that eigenvalue depending on the matrix H. If the inhomogeneous term Gx is not equal to 0, then for a solution to exist, the matrix I minus lambda H must be invertible, which again means that the determinant of the matrix is not equal to 0. Thus, this allows 1 minus lambda h inverse to be evaluated. Once that is done, all the alpha i's can be calculated and then we obtain the required solution using the alpha i's thus determined. We now consider an example of an integral equation where f of x is equal to x times 4x minus 3 plus lambda times an integral from 0 to 1 of dy 2x square plus 2y minus 1 f of y. In the language of equation, the kernel kxy can be written as a sum over i is equal to 1 to n pix hiy. So this is an equation with n is equal to 2 and p1x is equal to 2x, mi 2x square minus 1, h1 is equal to 1, gx is equal to x, thus p2x is equal to 1, s2 x is equal to 2 x. Hence, gi is given by the integral from a to b of dx 
जी एक्स इन टू एच आई एक्स दस जी वन इज इज इंटीग्रल फ्रॉम जीरो टू वन ऑफ डी एक्स एंड नाउ सफिस्यूट फॉर जी वन एंड एच वन सो विच इज फोर एक्स स्क्वायर माइनस थ्री एक्स इंटू वन इंटीग्रल इज माइनस वन बाई सिक्स therefore g1 is minus 1 by 6 g2 likewise can be calculated to be g- zero h11 is an integral from 0 to 1 of 2x square minus 1 dx which is minus 1 3 h12 is 1 s21 is integral 0 to 1 dx of the product of 2x into 2x square minus 1 which is equal to 0 s22 is 0 to 1 dx 2x equal to 1 with with the g1 g2 known h1 One h one two s two one and s two two known. We have the matrix as a two by two matrix, and the column vector has entries minus one by six and zero. So the determinant of i minus lambda h is equal to determinant of one plus lambda by three lambda zero one minus lambda, which is equal to one plus lambda by three. Into one minus lambda, hence the condition gives two eigenvalues because for the solution to exist, the determinant should be equal to zero. So the determinant is equal to zero for lambda is equal to one, and lambda is equal to minus three. Therefore, there are two eigenvalues: <laughs> lambda is equal to one, and lambda is equal to minus three. Thus, the solution of the inhomogeneous equation above is can be written in in the matrix form. Vector alpha one alpha two is equal to the vector multiplication of a two by two matrix with entries one minus lambda one and lambda by three in the diagonal elements minus lambda and zero in the off diagonal elements multiplied by the column vector minus one by six lambda zero divided by one plus lambda by three into one minus lambda. So this can be multiplied and one can see that this is simply equal to Minus one upon six plus two lambda and zero. So alpha one, alpha two are the two components of a column vector, where alpha one is minus one upon six plus two lambda and alpha two is equal to zero. Hence, f of x is equal to four x square minus three x minus lambda into two x square minus one divided by six plus two lambda, which is the final solution. For the equation, provided lambda is not equal to one and also not equal to minus three. So, students, let us summarize what we have learned in this module. In this module, we have learned the use of Neyman series, and this use is elaborated for solving Fedholm equations. The special simplifying nature of degenerate kernels is highlighted, and Some properties mentioned. Thank you.